Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to spend the next uh, hopefully 10 minutes talking about uh, pharmacomechanical uh, approach to IQDVT. Uh, it's uh, hard not to overlap with a very nice talk of Dr. Backward, uh, where he described his experience with uh, pharmacological uh, uh, approach. Just to briefly go through uh, what we know from the past, systemic thrombolytic therapy was tried in the 80s and 70s with, uh, uh, with no studies that could demonstrate a systemic, uh, uh, significant uh, difference, but a clear trend towards an improvement, both clinical and uh, uh, angiographic or venographic, uh, in favor of uh, streptokinase, which was used for the, that era. And also some smaller studies that uh, demonstrated long-term effect uh, positive for streptokinase. But the downfall of that study was really the, the demonstration of significantly higher bleeding risk when systemic thrombolysis was applied as compared to anticoagulation alone, which uh, then uh, led to uh, the introduction of uh, catheter-directed thrombolysis without mechanical means. Just briefly, and this was uh, uh, demonstrated by Dr. Uh, Backcourt, uh, we do these procedures with the patients uh, prone. We approach through the posterior tibial uh, vein. Uh, we approach through the popliteal vein in most cases where the thrombus is confined to the femoral vein and there above. There is, though, a problem when you have involvement of the popliteal vein in the sense that you will puncture the popliteal vein directly and then you will not be able to manage the thrombus in the popliteal vein, which will preclude inflow from the calf veins, which are very important. And that's why we have elected to, to puncture the posterior tibial vein in addition to the popliteal vein, so infusing through uh, two uh, approaches, uh, trying to open up the inflow from the calf as well as we can. And we also use sequential compression devices. And as Dr. Backcourt uh, mentioned, there are studies from Japan that demonstrated uh, improved thrombolysis with the use of compression devices. I'm just going to lead you through a very simple uh, common uh, case uh, which will uh, ring to all of you. Uh, involvement of the popliteal veins on the calf veins and we start by approaching the popliteal vein which is occluded in this case with thrombus as you can see. We then uh, do uh, uh, mechanical thrombectomy and just to demonstrate how that can work at its very best. And you can see how the uh, thrombus uh, uh, disappears here. And uh, this is how the vein looks uh, uh, following that. You can see on the slide to your left, left that there is still thrombus in the public vein which you couldn't affect with the mechanical devices. You also always check the contralateral, in this case healthy side, and make sure that there is not a thrombus in the inferior vena cava. And that is also uh, one reason that we use a CT or MRI often in the beginning, just to make sure that we understand the extent of the, thromb of the disease. This is then the day after. You can see that the posterior tibial vein, which was uh, entered untreated in this case, has cleared out, uh, out as well as the popliteal vein. I'm sorry, this is not the day after. This demonstrates the infusion catheters the one coming from the, pop, from the posterior tibial vein and overlapping with the one from the, uh, inferior vena, from the popliteal vein extending into the inferior vena cava. The goal is really to cover the entire thrombus segment in, with infusion catheters. This is the day after. Now the popliteal vein, the calf veins and the, the uh, iliac veins have been cleared except for a segment in the common iliac vein, which still is an narrow to be called thrombus, uh, as you can see here. This is then uh, stented uh, as has been demonstrated before. But this was really the treat the, the problems that we found with uh, uh, catheter directed thrombolysis as well, uh, was, was uh, uh, mentioned by Dr. Backcourt and other studies have demonstrated that is. If you use only infusion of the thrombolytic agent, the treatment time is very long. And that is uh, why uh, there have been introduced many equipments that uh, 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 assist us uh, to break down the burden of the clot, or uh, some uh, actually use uh, solely for uh, removal of the thrombus. 
This is the AngioJet device, which we uh, use uh, very commonly. This is the trellis device, which is very commonly used as well, based on uh, two balloons, which isolate the isolate the thrombus and then there is a vibrating or uh, catheter in between and thrombolytic agent is injected between these two segments and this can then be aspirated. And the final device that I will uh, demonstrate here is a catheter that uses ultrasound waves to help the, the penetration of the drug into the thrombus. There have been very few studies that have really have looked at uh, 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 randomizedly or uh, in any meaningful way at uh, how effective mechanical thrombectomy in combination or not in combination with uh, pharmacological uh, thrombectomy, uh, uh, how effective it is. This is a meta-analysis uh, by Dr. Gasparis, which you uh, are familiar with. In practicality, I looked at nine studies and all of those stu uh, studies uh, demonstrated uh, reduction in treatment time, reduction in the, uh, in the amount of drug used and uh, uh, the number of uh, uh, travels to the uh, imaging suite for follow-up. Cavan study, I will just go over this uh, uh, very briefly, and this was uh, covered very well by Dr. Backward. Uh, those were the in in inclusions criteria. About 900 patients uh, on each arm. And they published the first the six month uh, uh, follow up, which demonstrated significant improvement in patency, but not in post thrombotic syndrome. And it was not until they uh, uh, presented their 24 month uh, results that they found a significance in post thrombotic syndrome. It has to be mentioned uh, in regards to this study, they did not use mechanical devices. They had a very uh, low uh, rate of uh, usage of stents in this study as well which may actually have, uh, or you can at least speculate, uh, decreased the, the significance. The ATTRACT study is a large, uh, uh, very uh, extensive study in the United States, which has had some difficulties recruiting, but also uh, uses mechanical devices. So what, whom do we treat? And this was covered uh, uh, in the previous talk. We, uh, we try to concentrate on iliofemoral thrombosis, but we do also treat young patients with the isolated femoral vein thrombosis. This is uh, something we judge on a case-by-case -case, uh, uh, basis. Some patients have very severe symptoms uh, in the face of cancer, so you have to uh, 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 use your judgment on, and, uh, and help our patients that uh, uh, both in palliative uh, and as well as older patients which have severe symptoms. So no uh, absolute contraindications when it comes to AIDS or cancer. This is uh, uh, the protocol. Most of our patients do get uh, some kind of cross-sectional imaging, either MRI or CT. And this is just an example, just similar to what was demonstrated before, a thrombus that extends and is free-floating in the interior cava. Demonstrated on CT, something we couldn't have known before, and the subsequently resulted in filter placement. Patient with a previous stent, and then finally a young boy that presented with a chronic occlusion of the inferior vena cava, which we didn't know about, but was uh, helpful to know about before we uh, went into uh, the procedure. Is a filter warranted? We place about uh, filter in about 20% of our patients uh, prior to the procedure. We do this uh, up front through the jugular vein approach and leave an introducer sheet in the jugular vein, following that, and then we uh, put the patients uh, prone. We use mechanical thrombectomy almost on all of our patients and then leave an infusion catheter in place. I believe in the clean vein uh, uh, concept, that is to leave as little thrombus in there as uh, possible. And then these patients are treated just like any other patients with DVT uh, for uh, appropriate length of anticoagulation. So, conclusion, I think every patient with uh, involvement of the iliac uh, and femoral veins should be considered for uh, a thrombolytic.